So, you can begin. Sure. So, my name is Andrew Raphael. I'm the director or one of the directors of the Konohel Nutrition Center. Konohel means all together in Cacchiquel, which is the local dialect here in San Marcos, La Laguna, Guatemala. Um, I guess a little bit of background on me is I've been running Konohel since October of 2012. And, um, you know, we started small. Our primary function is distributing uh, mostly or entirely vegetarian meals to 60 of the most at risk people here in San Marcos. Um, but it's been really important to us, and me in particular, since I took over, that we, we grow and diversify and add a lot of different elements. You know, some of the major problems here in town include uh, unemployment, both of the local men and the local women. And so creating job opportunities, creating professional development opportunities, and having edu ed an educational aspect to the project, not only for our employees who are really, really thirsty to learn new techniques and new recipes and, and things like that, but also to the mothers of the families who benefit from our, our services, having them come in for workshops on women's reproductive health and nutrition and organic composting and really whatever is out there, whatever specialization is available in town, we want to provide a platform for people to, um, to learn. We also have two functioning community gardens, which we have a lot of our beneficiaries working in and several volunteers. We um, really, though, have been recently blessed to work with um, a really talented trio of people Juliana, Che, and B, who have gifted us with what I think is has got to be the most incredible echo kitchen I've ever seen, without a doubt. Certainly here on the lake, from what I understand, and, and perhaps throughout the country of Guatemala. Um, we already had two rocket stoves up and running, and now, thanks to the incredible technology that Che and, and B have, have provided with us, things that, that we couldn't have gotten anywhere else, and certainly even if we could have, we couldn't have afforded to get anywhere else. Um, I think that you know, for me, it's a dream come true because when I took over, I wanted to see the project grow and I wanted us to incorporate a lot of different elements to support ourselves and depend less on foreign donations. So thanks to B and Che and Julianne as well, we, we have that opportunity to grow. And, and I think that B and, and Che have changed the, the face of Konohel forever and, and really provided us with an amazing opportunity. Um, so, I mean, B, I've had a little bit of an opportunity to, to use and to enjoy the solar oven. But now our employees are far more trained than I am. And so as the director of the project, I wonder if you'd give me maybe a formal run through of what you have here. Yeah, please, please. So this is um, known as a, like a reflector cooker. Mm -hmm. So it's um, angled to capture the sun. And it has these reflective panels to capture as much of the sunlight as possible and direct it into the solar oven. And these One, are all materials you acquired locally? These are all materials acquired locally, except for um, this aluminum mylar, which mm -hmm. I did bring down from the States. But you can use um, aluminum foil in, in place of this. And I also left some aluminum mylar um, with all of you in case this, this tear, uh, tears you can replace it. So everything you use to build this is something that a local family or a group of local totally. contractors could get a hold of pretty easily here in this area. And that's the critical thing about appropriate technology is, mm -hmm. is, is building with locally available um, resources and tools so that nothing is coming from abroad. Everything can be sourced right. and built right here on site. Great thing about solar cooking um, is uh, it can, the way you describe how solar cookers work, is very similar to the greenhouse gas effect. So mm -hmm. it's a great way to, to teach kids about climate change mm -hmm. because um, this glass is very much like the atmosphere around our planet. Um, the thicker the glass, the thicker the insulation of the box, the hotter the oven is gonna get. The way it works is the sun enters the glass, you know, the light energy in enters the glass. After it passes through the glass, it's converted into thermal energy, very much the same way of what's happening with our atmosphere. So you could tell the kids, you know, as there's more pollution, if we're cooking, you know, with inefficient wood stoves, if we're, you know, coal um, power plants, the, the works, that's going to create a thicker atmosphere around the planet and the planet's going to heat up. In the same way, the thicker the glass, the thicker the box, um, the more reflectors, the more sunlight entering this, the hotter it's going to get. So what's good for the oven is not necessarily good for the planet. Yep. <laughs> and it's funny you say that too because already we've had um, a lot of interest from and, and have extended invitations to both the local elementary school and the local middle school. Wonderful. Come up here with their science class, with their, um, I don't know, home ec class and, and do field trips and research and use this, this kitchen potentially as the basis for some really awesome schoolwork. Awesome. Yeah.
So yeah, right now it's at, at 250 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So it's, you know, it's definitely more of a slow cooker, but as we saw, make cookies in about 45 minutes. And again, really excited to hear about your um, experimentations. Right now we're doing some solar roasted cacao beans, mm -hmm. but um, we source solar roasted cacao. Love to hear more about, you know, what, what would it take to cook beans in here? What would it take to cook bread? I know you got a, a pizza workshop coming up soon. That's right. And um, so yeah, really excited to see to see how that all works. Now, um, as far as the reflectors go, these are attached with uh, little chains, and this one goes down first, then this one, and then the next one. And um, as I mentioned earlier, this is a great way to contain the heat within. And well, I've noticed, for example, right as we're talking, the sun just went away and the temperature dropped significantly. Totally. Right? And so now that we've closed this up, the beans are going to keep cooking with the heat we've already captured. Exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's providing insulation on the glass. It's also um, any heat that's inside is being reflected back into the oven with the reflectors. So this is a really critical part of the design is that the reflectors can can serve as a as a lid to, to be able to close up the, the oven. Put this back up. And then the other amazing component design of this uh, cooker is this uh, Lazy Susan. The goal is to design an oven that the, the ladies could is easily move. And with these wheels, it, it should be relatively very easy for them to move. There's handles here. And so that will be the critical part is focusing it during the day. And um, as I showed you earlier, you can use the shadow, mm -hmm. or as uh, Ben pointed out, you can also use the shadow of the reflector on the mm -hmm. back. Okay. So you want to create the, the smallest shadow, or at least the shadow most parallel with the back. Right. And that's going to let you know that the sun is, uh, is directly over. This is the way we're going to get every single ounce of heat, or I suppose not ounces, but every single bit of heat we can. And this is really going to help us along with closing off and capturing the light that's already in there. Yeah. When the rain hits, you know, rainy season, there's a lot less sun. This is going to help us take advantage of every single minute of sun we can. Definitely. And yeah, I'd be really excited to hear updates, you know, see if you're able to cook and dehydrate foods during the rainy season, because mm -hmm. as I understand it, there still might be some sun in the morning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, um, just would, you know, recommend you keep a journal. Uh, like, you know, when, when you put something into uh, the oven, when it's ready, how you prepared it, same thing with a dehydrator. So that kind of um, knowledge can be passed on. Absolutely. And hopefully when I come back here in another year or so, um, y'all will have it dialed in. Mm -hmm. so. And, and my, my dream is to share this back or this, this training and, and this technology with as many other NGOs or small organizations Definitely. around the lake that are kind of fighting for their survival. The women's weaving co-ops in San Juan, some of the jornadas medicinales or some of the, the free health clinics. You know, this is for us going to provide a, a tremendous source of income and moreover, like marketability. We've already have we already have plans set up throughout the lake to sell these things in in health food stores and, and clinics all over the place. Um, this can be a great means of promotion, but also disseminating healthy products. You know, we're, we're looking to use a lot of the things we make here to feed the people in this town, not Definitely. just to make ourselves money, not just to experiment. Yeah. And, and I think about that combined with the responsible nature of our technology is a, is a region that's heavily deforested mm. and between the the new machines you guys have have blessed us with and the rocket stoves we've been using for the last few weeks we're down to you know maybe 20 pieces of wood a day to feed 60 people and virtually no gas that's amazing you know so we're we're really contributing towards the improvement or the reforestation of this region and um boy just the fact that we're not using cooking gas in general i think is wonderful yeah, no, and, and uh, you're totally right. I, I do think this is one of the most amazing, definitely the most amazing eco kitchen, appropriate technology demonstration site I've ever seen. Surely the most amazing in Guatemala and, and maybe one of the, the most amazing in the world as far as having the rocket stoves, the planches stove, the solar oven, and the solar dehydrator. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I think one of the most amazing things is how this technology can work together. Like um, one of the things Solar Cooker advocates is known as the integrated cooking method, right. where maybe you start your rice on the rocket stove, but once the sun comes up high enough, mm -hmm. you throw it in the solar oven. Mm -hmm. Or um, there's, a, there's a way you can uh, bring your rice up to a boil and then put it in uh, the solar oven with the panels down and it'll continue to cook to Absolutely. finish. Absolutely. And then uh, the, the great way of um, combining the dehydrator with the oven, such as doing the, the sun-roasted tomatoes, dehydrating them. Just finishing them off in the finishing oven. Finishing off the oven, doing, you know, uh, beet or zucchini chips, dehydrating. Them up. And then crisping them right. in the in the cooker, like melting cacao over the dehydrated fruit. Then uh, throwing them in the fridge. It's amazing. You guys have this fridge here. Right. right. So there's there's the the combinations of technologies and the creativity of you and the and the woman that cook here is is really limitless. Well, and it's just it's just each individual aspect of what this is going to bring to us. I think is incredible. Not even considering that they're all going to be put in play together. But you think about the ecological responsibility we have here in, in reducing the amount of wood and gas for cooking. You think about the educational aspect of it and bringing up the kids from town and the idea that this, this technology is going to be rep replicatable throughout you know, the, the local school curriculum. The fact that there's now a half dozen young men in town who know how to build these things and by the totally. end of the year there should be you know, three dozen young men in town who can totally. go out into any town on the lake and do these things. The fact that these technologies are going to in, like benefit us exponentially in achieving our goal of helping San Marcos end chronic malnutrition. Wow. You know, and, and if it was not, if it was any one of those single components, educational, self-sustaining, ecologically responsible, it'd be wonderful. But the fact is that it's all of those things together. Yeah. And while it's fun for us to sit here and talk about it, I think that the the application of it, the fact that it's going to be disseminated throughout this region, which really, really needs it. I don't think we've even begun to, begun yeah. to imagine the benefit this is going to have. Totally. Well, I'm really excited to to hear updates from this project. For sure. When I'm back in California, and I'll be expecting some solar dehydrated mangoes in the That's mail right. at some point. We'll try and ship them. <laughs> we'll find a way to lower our shipping costs, and we'll do it. Yeah, right on. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, man. This has yeah. been just a great experience. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely.